Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day today, and my name is Tech Medic, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Red Dead Redemption, what new players should go ahead and start doing. So, in this game there's a number of things that the Red Dead Redemption uh, doesn't tell you about, so you want to go ahead and kind of do these things. I'm going to jump off my horse here real quick because he's freaking out, because we just got attacked by two wolves. Um, you want to make sure that you are setting your minimap, which is in the lower left hand corner, to expanded. That can be done by going into display. And all the way down at the bottom, you want to go ahead and set your radar to expanded and choose what kind of blip size you want your quest markers to be on that minimap. You also want to go ahead and change your weapon reticle, especially if you're on PC, to go ahead and be a little bit smaller so it's not such a huge kind of dot that's on the screen when you go ahead and aim at things in the, in the background. And you can see that the dot is a lot smaller, which is going to give you a lot better aiming picture to go ahead and place your shots a little bit better. And if I put it in the dark right there, you can go ahead and see the dot in the center of the screen. That's going to allow me to make my shots a little bit uh, more accurate. That being said, you want to be able to save the game at a point to which, in case you want to play the game in the future from the very start, and avoid all that chapter one nonsense of having to go run around and save Micah and save John and guide everyone down into valentine as soon as you get into valentine you should be going into your story mode and then going into save game and create a manual save i would recommend doing three of them and it'll tell you the timestamp as well as uh the date and the progress behind it once that's done make three of them so that one will always be eaten up when you load from a manual save to an auto save and if you mess up on something or you fail a mission and you get bad reputation or you lose all your pelts and you load into the secondary save, at least you'll have the third one to go ahead and save your butt. So you'll have all those things there. And especially when you start Chapter 2 fresh, whenever you want to play the game over or you feel like you have you know, just want to start over because you learned something about the game, uh, you'll have that place to go ahead and start from all over again. Um, and it'll always be there in your cloud save too, which is really cool. So another thing that you want to keep in mind is that the game has a lot of different areas that you can loot on a 24 hour real hour basis, depending on where your last save was. So there's a lot of different locations that have a lot of money that you can actually go ahead and, um, loot right away as soon as you load into valentine and that is this little shack right here this little shack will have a gold nugget in it and two corpses that you can also go ahead and take a look at get some more information as well as collectibles and supplies and then you have ches porter up here which is going to have a lot of hostiles around it it's going to be like this little weird talking family inside of the barn there's going to be a lot of cash that you can go ahead and loot as well as way up here uh in the hanging dog ranch you can go ahead and grab yourself uh if you go around the back you can kill all the enemies and then you can go into the house and loot a hundred and i think like 20 some bucks plus some jewelry and if you go right down the road and you rob the lady don't kill her just rob her and there's a shotgun in the basement that you can go ahead and pick up which is an automatic shotgun really really nice weapon to have especially when you're running into grizzly bears and uh, cougars you can blast them and save yourself some time you also have uh, a couple of uh, nuggets of gold down here along the riverbed you will find a broken wagon with a little box right underneath it and you can go ahead and collect these three gold nuggets and sell them for $25 a piece. So those are some lootables that you can go ahead and take a look at as well as Moonstone Pond which is way over here. There is a uh, broken house which a tree fell on top of it. You can climb on top of that tree jump inside there's canned foods that are in there as well as a jewelry bag that is large which sells for 50 bucks 
you can go ahead and sell that. And down here, south of Valentine, there's two uh, upper areas, and there's kind of like a little canyon going between the two of them right here. If you go ahead and look on this, right above Twin Stack Pass, there is a loot box that you can go ahead and pull out about a hundred bucks from right off the bat so that you can have some good starting money when you start chapter two. That being said, you have to unlock the fence in order to sell those valuables. So play the missions up until you get to the John Marston mission where he has to go uh, blow up something over here in Lemoyne and then uh, stop a train. Once you get back and you talk to one of the ladies at the camp, she will have you go and uh, do a number of things, but then you get access. Actually, let me roll back. You get access to the fishing pole like that once you do the John Marston mission with the uh, train heist, and then uh, the other one with Jose, uh, you get the ability to um, get access to Hosea, who is the older man, uh, German man, and he's going to send you to Emerald Ranch, and then that's where you're going to get access to the fence, which is an NPC that you can sell jewelry to. So those are just some things that you can keep in mind in order to get your economy going right off the bat. The next thing that I want to tell you guys about is you're going to be able to go ahead and look at all of the different animals that are on the screen and determine them uh, what their pelt quality will be. So anything that you hit in the body itself, you're going to reduce that star rating from whatever it is. So this Rocky Mountain Bull Elk, if I were to hit it in the in the side, and I'll go ahead and do that here, probably won't kill him, just piss him off, but he is now a one star. If you barely saw that or pause the video itself, you're going to see that he's one star now. And I think I just, yep, okay, good. So you're going to reduce the pelt quality uh, aspect. So you want to shoot animals in the neck, above the shoulder, closer to the head, some animals if you shoot in the head like wolves cougars things like that if it's in the skull you're going to ruin the pelt because the pelt is a part of uh the head is a part of the pelt itself in those animals but for like deer uh boars and uh any other animal it's pretty much from the neck down that you're going to be collecting so it depends on where you place your shot if you go ahead and hit your dead eye you're going to get indicators of the best places to shoot the animal you can go ahead and aim for those as well but my recommendation for you is just hit everything in the neck and you're going to be golden from there. The next tip that I have for you is to turn into um, your camp cook all perfect pelts that you get. You are going to need all of these pelts and you can initially do the Legends of the East Satchel. If you go ahead and do that right off the bat, you have access to the entire world, which is... All the way from your initial starting zone, all the way down to the Rhodes area, St. Denis, and into the Strawberry area to hunt the pelts that you need. So you need to save all the perfect pelts that you can get. And your bow is going to be the best way to get them. So there is also a location that you want to go ahead and pick up two arrows. These patterns are going to help you out, especially when you're hunting cougars or you just want to cause some destruction. So the first one is going to be the dynamite arrow. The dynamite arrow is going to be found right here on the map underneath a broken bridge next to a kind of broken cottage. The next arrow that you want to go ahead and pick up is going to be... I believe right down the area here in the mysterious hill home it's gonna look like a little hobbit house so right next to the cabin outside under like a crate and next to a barrel is gonna be a little lockbox you're gonna open that and you're gonna get the poison arrow what the poison arrow does is and if we go ahead and hit our tab 
button here and we go over to poison we're gonna see that it does a significant amount of damage and it causes the animal to be staggered and go into an unconscious state all the way up to grizzly bears so if you hit a cougar in the face it's gonna stumble off fall to the ground you can walk up and finish it off with a knife kill and that'll give you the perfect pelts that you will need in order to go ahead and start the game off right legends of the east satchel is going to be one of those things that i would probably do had i started the game to save myself time from running back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to the trader uh general store as well as the tra um, trapper to sell items off it makes you be able to stack 99 of every item except pocket watches pocket watches are the only things that will only stack up to five unfortunately that's just the way it is but there's some trinkets a number of trinkets that you want to go ahead and pick up in the game you will find all that out as it shows you you know from the time that you unlock the fence the fence will go ahead and craft all these specialty trinkets which will add different stats and boosted uh, effects to your character as well as your horse so you want to make sure that you're not just sticking with the horse that you have that you initially saw so you can go ahead and pick up any one of these horses and they will have significant stats if you really want a nice horse and I'm just riding this horse for the sake of getting its uh, bonding levels up every bonding level is easily attainable to level two which will help you out in selling them to the stable which will get you about 12 to 15 bucks if the horse itself has a handling of race so if it's a race horse and you got level two bonding on it this one's actually level four right now and i should go to the stable and sell it but it's going to give you a lot more money back if you want to look for a red arabian which is right around here where is it it's down here next to the three golden nuggets that i told you about there's a red arabian that spawns here that you can go ahead and get it's good but if you really want a nice horse you can come up here and look for the white arabian right above this area here next to the grizzly bear this is going to be the best horse in the game that you can go ahead and pick up and that'll give you a lot of uh you know kind of uh stamina and health and it's just going to be overall the, the best um horse that you can have in the game i do have it it's stable right now but unfortunately you know i want to ride all these other horses and sell them off so i can get some cash but um, if you were looking for anything else, it'll come naturally throughout exploration in the game itself. I highly recommend that you guys take your time and, and get the story done. But, you know, you want to go ahead and hit up those different locations because that free money will be there until the mission actually happens. So the way that this one becomes unavailable is uh, it's actually... Um, all the knickknacks inside of the building itself will be despawned except for the loot uh, chest which is in the barn on the second um, level so you can go ahead and loot that over and over and over for about a hundred and um, ten bucks plus a jewelry bag I think it is so that's always going to be there but that's my beginner starting you know things you should keep an eye out for and uh, I hope you enjoy the game. Thank you for sharing your time with me. I hope you enjoyed this and have a nice day. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.